Hello everyone, hope you can hear me okay and everything is great. Um, so excited to be part of this awesome event and to kick off Inspire Live. Um, hello everyone just coming in. Um, I'm going to just introduce myself really quickly. My name is Dr. Eugenia Duodu and I am the Chief Executive Officer of Visions of Science Network for Learning. Um, we are a charitable organization that aims to uh, increase the educational achievements and career aspirations of youth from low income and marginalized communities through meaningful engagement in nothing else but STEM um, and positive youth development activities. So super excited to be here and super excited to be your moderator um, while we share awesome and inspiring stories of uh, various women in STEM. I see you all coming in and joining. Hello, everyone. Uh, we are just going to get started with our first uh, panelist very, very soon. Um, in terms of my own personal journey, I uh, actually have a PhD in chemistry. I did my undergraduate degree at um, the University of Toronto in chemistry and biology, and then I went on to do a PhD in chemistry. So it has been an interesting journey in STEM, and what I really realized is that while I love um, research and, and you know navigating through that field, I also loved in lifting and empowering my community. So I had this awesome opportunity with Visions of Science to do that. And uh, so that's what I'm doing now. And we're able to reach uh, about a thousand youth per year through the work that we do. So it's awesome. Hello, uh, uh, Wiseman Canada. Hello, everyone coming in and joining us. Uh, super excited uh, to have you here. And it's going to be an awesome live. Um, so our first speaker today is going to be Bailey Burns. I'm going to let her, her introduce herself. Um, and she should be logging on any minute from now. Um, one of the things that's really awesome is we get to really ask super casual uh, questions uh, about uh, STEM and, and, and the, the different journeys of the women that we'll be interviewing. Uh, so you'll be able to hear some really candid things about how people are feeling. Um, I know that one of my favorite moments in the lab uh, doing different things was just really being able to uh, experiment. Uh, you feel like a kid again, and I've loved doing experiments since I was a kid, so it really enabled me to do that. So I am going to allow Bailey. Okay, let's make sure she can join. I'm just waiting for her to join. Hello. Hi. Hi, Bailey. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I am awesome. I'm super excited to be here and to interview you as my first panelist uh, for our science panel. Um, so how about you introduce yourself and I'll get into some questions for you. Awesome. Well, first of all, I just want to say I'm really excited that you're the one moderating. So that's uh, absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. So my name is Bailey Burns. Um, I'm here at an engineer girl. Um, I'm a systems engineer um, and I work in the aerospace community. I just accepted a job at a place called Paragon Space, and we're developing the life support system for the uh, lander that's going to land on the moon in 2024. Um, so that's what I'm working on right now. I'm also a master's student, so the whole doctor thing that you have going on, I hope to do that one day. But yes, now I'm just soon. a master's student. Um, I am studying space resources, so that's basically like asteroid mining, using resources on the moon, that kind of oh, stuff. And yeah, I'm just a big space nerd. I have a space page on Instagram. I do speaking about space and STEM, and I just like space a lot. I like I got the moon right yeah, there. Yeah, <laughs> I see the moon and the stars in the background. How about yep. you shout out? How about you quickly shout out your space page? Okay, it's really easy. It's at a space story. So super easy to find. There's also okay. a website if you guys are interested. Um, if you like space, that's the place to go. I talk about space all the time. Amazing. I I can't wait to learn personally. I wasn't much of a space nerd, but I. You know, I can be very soon. <laughs> so I have no problems with that. Um, so I actually wanted to ask you growing up, uh, kind of what influenced this. So what were uh, some of your favorite moments uh, in school, classes, clubs, off campus, activities, whatever the case might be? Uh, what were some of yeah. your favorite moments? So I kind of have a weird background. Um, I thought I was going to be a journalist until like, oh. 
junior high of like junior senior year of high school I like I knew I liked STEM but mm -hmm. like I didn't think I could do it you know what I mean so then when I finally got into like a top engineering school I was like I guess we're doing it. Okay, let's figure yeah. out what happens. Um, so I didn't really get into STEM until college. Um, I took some like biology classes that I liked and stuff like that. But when I got to college, um, I think my favorite classes were the ones that were like super hands on. Um, I really liked physics a lot. Uh, specifically, I remember fluids too was really great for me. Um, cause that was about like rocket propulsion and stuff. Nice. And that's when I was like, okay, space, that's what I want to do. Cause I didn't know, I, I thought I was gonna be a journalist. So I didn't know what I wanted to do in college. And I found that and I was like, I guess we're going to moon. I don't know. Hey, okay. like, that's amazing. And I love how, um, it was just kind of out of an organic passion for it. Mm -hmm. And, and I, you know what, it's so funny. So many people, you start off wanting one thing and then you have different experiences and it makes you want something different. So mm -hmm. So that's awesome. Awesome. Um, were you involved in any clubs or activities in school? And like, how did you learn about those opportunities? Um, through school, it was basically like, I wish I had done more. And that's my advice to all you younger girls right mm -hmm. now that, that are on is get involved right now. Because I didn't really, like I said, I kind of was finding my way. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, sure. So I guess I would say like the opportunities I should have seeked out was like, um, specifically researching with some of the professors, like some mm -hmm. of them kind of talked to me about it, but I never got into it working in the lab and stuff like that. Um, in terms of extracurricular activities, I did a lot with like, kind of like volunteer groups and like mentoring. So that was really great just to meet the different people. It wasn't really STEM based, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a huge people person. So that was really what helped me a lot get involved with all those extra things just meeting the people who were involved with them. Nice, nice. And I, I think meeting people makes a huge, huge difference. You meet people and you realize you're cool. You're awesome. I, I, I could be like you. And I think before, as you said earlier, you kind of look at the, these careers and these things and you're like, I could never do that. But when you meet <laughs> the real people, you're like, I could do this. So that's awesome. Um, so what, I know you're still on your career journey. You're still on your career projection. Uh, sky's the limit, literally, for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what has been um, your favorite experience in your career so far? Um, that's, that's a really good question. Mm -hmm. Because of the direction I want my career to go, I've gotten to do some really cool things like public speaking. Um, mm -hmm. I've spoke at like NASA and at the Smithsonian stuff like that. Um, I think the coolest thing I got to do is this thing called Project Possum. Um, through that group, I'm actually a citizen science suborbital astronaut candidate. Um, okay. And that's the direction I want to go. I want to go to the moon. I want to work on the moon. I want to do all that stuff. So doing stuff like that was really amazing. I got to work on like, g-force training i got to do like i flew an airplane i got to do hypoxia training in a spacesuit and all this stuff oh like that goodness. so that was like the hands-on experience that made me realize i do want to go be an astronaut yeah that's amazing that's awesome and it's great that you want to not only be an astronaut but with the citizen science give back and make sure that the public knows uh, more about the awesome stuff that you're doing i am into it all okay. <laughs> <laughs> um so i have a couple more questions for you um, how did you go about finding STEM resources to educate yourself outside of the classroom? I know you mentioned journalism and you had a bit of a journey. Were you exposed to any STEM stuff uh, in, in, your, in your high school career? And, and how did you navigate those resources? Um, I think I was really lucky with the teachers in high school that I got because they were very much like, ask your dumb questions and we'll mm. get through it together. And I think that was a huge part I mean, with that kind of journalism background, if you have to go investigate for yourself, you can't just like sit there and wait for the information to come to you. Sure. Um, so that's, I have, I have a blog and everything like that where I talk about like space news. I have to go do the research about like what they're doing on the moon so that I can educate everyone else. So I think that's been a huge thing is just using the internet and like finding mm -hmm. those space journalism things to just go like, you know, you, you read an article and you're like, oh, I don't know what that is. So you look up that word and it leads to the next word. Like having that kind of like investigative personality For was sure. really helpful. Um, the other thing is actually Instagram, which is really cool because we're on Instagram right now. Yes, we um, are. The minute I started growing my presence on Instagram and deciding to kind of jump into the social media thing, I started meeting people who were mm -hmm. like really passionate and really excited to, um, I actually found Project Possum through Instagram okay. and, and just kind of like, and like this page specifically, see it be at STEM it, like just those pages are on Instagram, which you wouldn't find organically, like just trying to Google STEM, you know, oh, and so having sure. it here and interacting, it's been amazing. That's amazing. I'm so happy and I'm happy social media played a role 
in your projection <laughs> in your progression so that's awesome um how did you go about finding mentors Ooh, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. And I actually talked about that. I, I try to go live and talk about all those career advice as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, I have one mentor particularly, particularly her name's Kate. And um, she's been kind of like my mentor of mentors, if that makes sense. Nice. Um, she's been amazing. And really kind of what I understand when it comes to like mentors and finding mentors is you got to go out there Go, go to conferences, go talk to people and meet as many people as possible. And I'm telling you guys, it'll click with someone. It's one yeah. of those where you just kind of like know there's a flow. You guys are on the same page. Or maybe like in terms of Kate, she is like an amazing role model. And I'm like, that's who I want to be. Mm-hmm. So you just open up that conversation and the whole mentoring thing. And if you pick the right mentor, it's very going to, it's going to flow. It's going to be very natural. Um, the other thing I will say when it comes to mentoring, and this is really scary, especially for us us younger girls out there just starting our career, you do have to be the one that approaches someone about being a mentor and, and just take that in stride and be like, hey, I want you to mentor me. Will you please mentor me? As, as opposed to waiting for someone to come to you and pick you out of the bunch. You need to no, go out there sure. and meet someone. For sure. I like all of your advice. And I think the main <laughs> thing, the main thing too, is people sometimes feel awkward about approaching people and it can be so scary. Um, but when you when you think about that person as another person that's gone through different things as well, it's just really a conversation and let's see where it goes from there. So mm-hmm. it's really important to put yourself out there. I agree completely. Um, and then uh, the other question is, what was your expectation versus the reality of your current role, what you're doing right now? Kind of what were you thinking when you went into it and how is it really right now? Um, so I do want to kind of say for all you people that are in STEM right now, in college, in high school, I think the hardest thing about it is you, you're you going into college and you're coming out of college with all these ideas that, you know, you're going to be the one that cures cancer, you're the one that's going to go send people to the moon, that kind of stuff, and you have all these great ideas that you want to do, and then you get into the real world, and you're the baby engineer, you're the bottom rung, and I guess the be- biggest thing there is you can't give up. You still have to chase those dreams. You have to know it's going to take a little bit longer. Um, be patient. I was very much like, I'm going to go build a rocket, and then I sat there reading manuals for the first three months. So. Yeah. It's kind of like, be patient. You are the youngest one. Um, Ask your questions, get your experience, but don't give up on, you know, going to the moon or anything. Exactly, exactly. And, and I think uh, humble beginnings always is is important. But I I think it's so, so awesome to just balance your expectations, go in there with an open mind and see what you can do. And give yourself time to learn. Because once you're kind of the senior person, you got to hit the ground running. So I agree. Uh, you can't <laughs> make it. Her- Go ahead. But, but becoming the senior person, it happens so much faster than you expected. Like, I, I didn't think I was ready to step into a leadership role. And they were like, here you go. Like, yeah. So just be ready for it when it exactly, comes up. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and enjoy, enjoy the time in between, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what does a day in your life look like when you're at work, school, studying? Um. Yeah, so right now, like I said, I just started my new job, so it's a lot more training than normal. Um, I think it starts like every day, probably, you know, you go in and you check your emails, and you make sure you didn't miss anything big, um, and then you got to kind of jump into what the next task is. Um, for me personally, right now, like I said, um, I'm working on the Lunar Lander, which we have a deadline of 2024 to get that oh, done, and that's goodness. like, it, it moves really fast. Like mm-hmm. every week they come up with a new problem. So it's very like fast paced. Um, you have to figure out what the problem is, you have to go research it, then you have to fix it in the course of like a day or two days. So you have to be on top of it and moving. Mm-hmm. Um, some of that, and in the future, I'm planning on it going into the machine shop where we're actually working with parts right now, but we're not there yet. Okay. Um, and then finally, my day ends with I'm also a master's student. So then I have homework after that. I uh, might have like an online class where we have to like zoom in and like, you know, so it's it's very busy. It's high paced. Um, if you if you guys want like a fast paced life, engineering can move really fast. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it sounds like it. Oh, my goodness. And what school did you go to or are you attending right now? Just so the, everyone knows. Yeah, so both my degrees are from Colorado School of Mines. Um, it's a pretty small school, but it's a engineering only school. So oh, wow. you're, you're surrounded by a lot of, you know, fellow nerds and yeah. fellow STEM people. Yeah, yeah, you're in good company. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, so what would you what we're just wrapping up our 
my interview with you here. Uh, what is some advice that you would give for a young girl considering a career in STEM? Um, I, the hardest thing is I have so much, you know. Um, I think probably the biggest thing is um, you, you kind of have to set yourself up for, for uh, success, you know. You don't have to know exactly what you're doing. I had no idea what I was doing. But just, you know, develop those skills, be driven, be curious right now while you're young, get those skills, bring them in. And honestly, this sounds weird, but the rest of it just unfolds. Yeah. You know, the, the, the next step is you just got to hold on and go with whatever happens because it happens fast. It's all very exciting. So just, you know, set yourself up for success and then just ride it the rest of the way. I love it. I love it. Um, and then the last question that I'll ask you is who is your biggest STEM role model? Um, or you can I'm, name more than one if you want. <laughs> I probably I'm actually through Possum. I'm through. I'm part of something called the Possum Thirteen. Mm -hmm. um, we're thirteen female ambassadors interested in space. And actually, I just saw um, real Dr. G. She's one of them. She's one oh, of my nice. STEM role models. Um, anyone in that group specifically a part of my STEM role models because uh, it's a it's a group of amazing thirteen amazing women. They're doctors. They're teachers. They're me they're medical doctors. They're you know doctors. Dr. G is uh, like a chemist and everything like that. So it's just an amazing group of people, very diverse, all backgrounds. And they just, awesome. we have a group chat where those most supportive people and they inspire me like just to keep going and living my dream. It's like the best thing I could have asked for. <laughs> amazing. So you don't have just one, you have a whole bunch. Well, 12 actually, because there's 13 <laughs> of us. So I have 12. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, amazing. Well, Bailey, it has been awesome chatting with you. I got to get over to Alyssa's space where you guys have something in common with space. <laughs> um, but thank you so much uh, for for speaking with me and for just sharing your heart. And I'm sure so many uh, different girls that are online and different people are inspired. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. And everyone, I'm really excited to see all the other interviews. Thank you guys so much. I really awesome. appreciate it. See you. Bye. Bye. Okay, awesome. So that was Bailey Burns, if you're just tuning in. Um, she talked about her journey uh, in space. Uh, hopefully, Bailey will make it to the moon. Somebody said that. Uh, that's definitely what she wants to do. Uh, so, so we're excited about that. And uh, it was really awesome to see and to hear some of the things that she was doing and some of the things that she's up to. And also understanding that she started off kind of wanting to do journalism. And then things just evolved into what they are now. So super, super great, super awesome. Um, and excited uh, to hear she gave a lot of amazing resources. I'm going to be leaving uh, this video on the CFB at STEM at IG Live, so you'll be able to rewatch and hear all of that. I'm just waiting on our next guest, Alyssa Space, uh, who should be joining soon, and uh, can't wait to have a, have, a have a chat. Okay, Alyssa, you are here. Um, so, Alyssa, it would be great if you can ask to join, and then I will get started on asking you some questions. You can introduce yourself, um, and that'll be awesome. So let me see if I can do that. I am waiting for her, and we'll get into it. So far, this has been good. Thank you all for coming. Hello, Alyssa. Hi, how are you? I'm doing incredible. How are you? I'm good. Can you hear me well? Yes, I can purpose great so how about you just jump in to introducing yourself we're so excited yes um okay so my name is Alyssa space i'm the owner and founder for her cosmetics an all natural vegan and cruelty free cosmetic line i'm actually located here in Amazing. detroit and i'm here in my lab actually um in core city where we formulate all of our products and i am also um, a chemist so i graduated from michigan state university in um spring of 2016 so Oh, amazing. Alyssa, you are stacked. So <laughs> let, me, let me just get, wrap my mind around this. You own a company, you're running a company, and you, you're a whole chemist. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you're all around awesome. Great. Thanks, Alyssa. Thanks for that. Thank you. Um, so we're going to get, I'm going to get into some questions for you. Are you cool with that? Yes, of course. Perfect. So my first question is, uh, what are some of your favorite moments in school, uh, whether it was clubs, off-campus activities, anything like that? Um, as far as, like, 
being in school, I think like getting to know other students that have the same struggles as me is really something that's important to me because mm -hmm. when you're going through like your um, undergrad experience, you don't want to feel alone. Like feeling alone is no. like the so, like no other people there in your struggle, not that you want them to struggle, but that they have the same experiences gives you like some type of, you know, like, okay, I can do this because they did it. We're here together. So exactly. That's amazing. And uh, I, I think I love those moments as well, because it definitely affirms everything that you're doing and everything that you're trying to do. So that's yeah. awesome. Um, so were you involved in any special clubs or activities growing up in school? And how did you learn about these activities? Yes. Um, when I was younger, my mother actually had me in academic games. I was always in like uh, science experiment uh, competitions. I was also really into dance as well, too. But when I actually got into college, I joined the National Society of Black Engineers, which is a super supportive group um, because my first major in college was chemical engineering. So nice. actually helped me really learn more about myself, the support systems that were available in school for minority women. So mm -hmm. some of the programs that I was involved in as a minor amazing amazing and and you heard about this primarily through well initially through your mother because she yes. got you in and mm -hmm. then just as you how did you hear about the other opportunities like nesby and such um when i got into school i actually like purposely looked for um groups that supported women of color in stem yes. and just um students in stem mm -hmm. because no one in my family actually was like a doctor or had any type of background in science. Um, everyone in my family was like a lawyer or they worked like regular, you know, nine to five jobs. So I, I was actually like the first one to like step into the STEM field in my family. So. Okay. Well, you trailblazing. <laughs> Good for you. Amazing. Um, so what has been your favorite experience in your career so far? I'm sure there are so many more yeah. <laughs> incredible experiences to come, but what has been, um, your favorite so far? Thus far, I would have to say opening my lab space here in Detroit was probably like the biggest accomplishment I've had thus far. Even though it started off small, I have like 200 square feet. It's like moving from my home kitchen to a space where I can actually, mm -hmm. now it's actually called My Space Laboratories, where I can teach other students and other girls that are interested in science that it's possible. It's just like, it was groundbreaking for me because one, there aren't that many business owners in my family. And two, mm -hmm. I'm the first person in my family to have a lab space. So like Amazing. this was something like, just huge for me. So this whole lab space, that's yours. That's you. Yes, this everywhere behind me. I'm oh actually my. at my lab table right now. I could give you guys a quick tour too. If you you know what? Say. Let's do that. Why <laughs> not? Let's do a quick tour. We can go off script. So, I know I'm a little shaky, but this is actually our lab table where we do a lot of our formulation and we have a lot of our like storage of our products over there. And just giving you guys like a little quick tour. There's my research intern. She's actually a chemistry major at Kalamazoo College. So just a you know a little brief oh wow well good for you making a name doing what you need to do i'm gonna have to check out your cosmetics line i've been meaning to so i will i will for her cosmetics mm -hmm. yes okay amazing um so how did you uh, i know that you were I, I think you've already answered this so i'm gonna skip to another one how did you go about finding mentors and like what was the inf influence of mentors in your life mentors okay so as far mm -hmm. as my it really is just about networking, getting to know people that are in the same field as you, that have the same interests as you. And then like um, that was mentioned before, like just going and asking, like taking that leap of faith and saying, hey, can I work with you? Hey, can you help yeah. me? Some people are going to say no. And then some people are going to respond like, like positively. They're going to actually help you. My mentor actually is in this um, shared lab space with me as well. Amazing. And she taught me so much. She helped me when I first began formulating. She's helped me get into programs, um, secure grants and funding for my business. Like, and it's also a mutual relationship. So like, it's definitely a give and take. It's not just taking. So it's really like, it's, it's vital to have mentors that support you and are in your corner. I feel you. And it is, it certainly is. So, so, so important. And it's awesome. And, and, and the fact that you really need to just put yourself out there and, and yeah. talk to people not be shy no one has time so <laughs> so it's awesome that's awesome um okay so what so i know you're a business owner going mm -hmm. through the ups and downs uh being an entrepreneur can be tough and i could say that personally so what was your expectation versus the reality of your role so yeah. my expectation was the moment i launched my website i was gonna sell out <laughs> like, 
<laughs> so back in March of 2018, when I actually launched my first e-commerce website with for her cosmetics, I literally, and I tell people this to say, like, I literally sold like $50 worth of products. And it was like, one of them was my mom. <laughs> my son was like, <laughs> reality check. I hear you. you got to invest in marketing. You got to invest in like creating a story. You have yeah. to literally like it's not just okay. I want to start a business. Let me just go out there and you know hope. And Here pray. I am, world. Yeah. Yeah. So it definitely was an awakening. Um, it it really taught me like to be strategic. Like, and that's even a part of my like positive affirmations. Like, just being a strategic business owner, not just throwing mm -hmm. money anywhere, but literally like sitting down, coming up with a plan, and then executing. So, um, it's business can I mean it goes up and down especially like with COVID now too but it definitely teaches you a lot of life lessons like how to deal with stress how to manage people how to say no how to say yes like how to manage your time like so yeah. it's, it's I'm still learning and I'm yeah the game so yeah business is definitely the best teacher yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's a school of life for sure so that's that's awesome but it's great that you're taking everything in stride it yes. seems as though you're rolling with the punches and, and even though things do get tough, you are remaining resilient. So that is awesome. And I love to see it. We love to see it. Um, <laughs> what does a day in your life look like while you're at work? You're in the lab. What does a day in the life look like for you? Um, so like a full day usually starts with I wake up in the morning. I take my little Yorkie for a walk in the morning because she's usually at home for a few hours a day. So I try to get her exercise in the morning. I get ready. Um, I run down to the lab and I'm typically here eight hours a day with my research intern. And right now we're working on a new um, product that we're releasing in the fall. So um, while we're here, usually I do have conferences, sometimes online classes, meetings, um, checking emails, responding to like inquiries about products or problems that people may have. So mm -hmm. I'm always on the go. Like I literally have my calendar in front of me all day. I have a notebook because I like to, I'm a scratcher outer. So like I like to scratch things out when they get done. Yep, and then, it's um, done. Yes. And then, of course, I try to leave room for um, self-care at the end of the day, too, like whether That's it's right. taking a nap or just, I don't know, going for another walk by myself or just keep it to myself for a minute because it's a lot of interactions that I have daily and in and out. Mm. So um, that's typically like a day for me. And then by the time nighttime comes, I'm tired. So, oh, so you got to <laughs> sleep. So you got to sleep. But from Yorkie <laughs> to bed, I love it all. Yeah. And um, I'm really, I'm really happy that you mentioned self-care. I think a lot of times uh, we forget that how important that is and how necessary that is in order to be able to do the incredible things we're doing. Uh, exactly. So there's only one you. Uh, so you got to take care of you. So that's awesome. That's really, really great. Um, so what is some advice that you would have for a young girl considering a career in STEM? Um, my advice, my like all the time advice that I always say is like, whatever you actually put your mind to or whatever you want to achieve, I feel like you should go for it, regardless mm -hmm. of the naysayers, regardless of what your parents even say, your friends, because yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've heard the cosmetic industry is so saturated or this, that, and the third. And it's just, okay. But if it's something that I believe in, that I have a passion for and I love, it won't matter. I know the people that are naturally supposed to be there and support me will be there. So for women that are going into STEM, the people that you need to have in your corner will show up and you'll build your little village of supporters and you'll flourish. <laughs> yes, you will. I love that. I love that positive affirmation to the young girls out there too. So that's yes. amazing. And so I'll end this interview um, with the number one question. Um, who is your biggest STEM role model at this moment? Yes, this is my favorite question because since I was a younger girl, I've been in love with Mae Jemison. One, because he was the first African-American in the space. And then two, that's my last name. So like, it's just, they just go together. Like, I love Mae Jemison. I've seen her in person. I've I've gone. Oh, to, amazing. Yes, I met her at Western University, actually, like a year after I graduated. And I'll never forget it. She touched my shoulder. But... <laughs> 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 no, but she's amazing. Like she, she's like broke the the glass ceiling. She did mm -hmm. NASA and was like, "I'm going to space." I'm like, and you're gonna take me. So yeah, an example of like just being deliberate and literally going after what you believe in. No, I love it. I love it, and I love that you got to meet your biggest role model and just not a, a far off dream. And that she touched your shoulder. Yes, that's some big <laughs> stuff right there. Not everybody can say that. So that's amazing. Any last words as, as we sign off, Alyssa? It's been amazing um, yeah. to meet you as a chemical engineer, as a 
a business owner, as a young young black woman killing it in the game. Any other uh, last words that you have for us? Oh. I do want to tell everyone to take a chance and check out For Her Cosmetics. We are an mm -hmm. all-natural vegan cosmetic line. We're actually having an amazing sale right now. All of our lippies, like our lip glosses. Okay. Are off. Yes. Mm, that looks like my color over there. Hold up. Look, sis. Oh, hey. Okay. <laughs> but yes, check us out. Um, support us. And um, also look into MySpace Laboratories, which is our actual nonprofit arm. And uh, take a look at what we're doing in the community and how we're getting girls involved in science amazing so um, i'm going to wrap this up uh, i already uh, you know i started this talking about visions of science and and the <laughs> things that we're doing so we're just in toronto not too far from detroit uh so we might we might need to link up and yes. make sure our youth can meet you and talk to you and stuff like that so uh that's awesome it's so nice to meet you Alyssa. Yes. i know that i'll be in touch with you and i hope everyone else uh, makes sure that they hop onto for her cosmetics and then gets to know you more <laughs> Thank awesome. You. Thank you. Have a Thank good you. One. You as well. All right, everyone. So that is the end of the science live segment of uh, this incredible Inspire Live that we're doing. So happy that you're all here. Uh, we're going to get into the next segment um, in a couple of minutes. So please stay tuned. Uh, this awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, CEO of uh, Canada Codes is coming on, uh, Melissa Surfer Dean. So make sure that you tune in and hear what she has to say and as she interviews incredible women in tech. Uh, so thank you so much for joining with me uh, and for for doing uh, for just listening. And hopefully you you are inspired. I I know that I'm inspired. So uh, we we appreciate you and and continue to to pursue. Uh, STEM and don't let anyone tell you different. So we will talk very soon. See ya.